We'll get to those top stories in just a moment. Good morning, everyone. I'm Crystal Gutierrez. I'm Ian Schwartz. Today is Saturday, April 28th. Hope you're having a great start to the weekend. I think we're all crossing our fingers that the winds do not come back. What was it, windy the other day? It was. Oh, it was. Pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They are. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Not as bad. Not as bad. Good. There, the little silver line in there for you. Let's take a look first at Sandia Peak. A nice time lapse, Crystal. You can see the cirrus clouds high above. Seriously. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good one. Oh, okay. Good one. I got it. <laughs> and as we take a look at satellite radar, you can see a little bit of cloud cover in northern New Mexico streaming in from the northwest. We're not going to look for any rain out of this batch. We do have a chance for some activity over the central mountain chain this afternoon. Maybe some uh, light rain and some dry lightning. Mainly dry storms, lightning with them. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. 52 degrees right now in Albuquerque as you're starting your morning. The winds are calm. That's great news. And most of the day, they are going to remain calm. They will start to pick up, though, in the evening and overnight hours. We're going to talk all about that in your full forecast. Current temperatures, 42 in Farmington. Boy, it's chilly in Gallup as you step outside. 34 degrees. Same story in Taos. 45 in Santa Fe. A little bit warmer in the east. 50 and 6 in Roswell, 46 in Silver City. Let's take a look at your day ahead in Albuquerque. Really not bad at all. We're where we should be temperature wise for this time of year, getting up to about 75 for our high. We're going to see those winds picking up. How long do they last? And will Albuquerque have a shot for some rain today? How about Sunday? All those details in your full forecast. All right, thanks, Ian. Pictures of a Bernalillo County commissioner in what some say is a compromising position is getting national attention. This after the governor, a fellow Republican, is calling for him to step down. A Seattle based photographer documenting the sex trade in the Philippines snapped pictures of Commissioner Michael Weiner with young women in front of a brothel. Weiner insists he was just sightseeing during a flight layover and that he was with his fiance, who's a local. Now, Weiner has been the subject of scrutiny before for his sexist and racist jokes at work, but has always refused to step down. Yesterday, the governor called for Weiner's resignation, saying she is deeply troubled by Weiner's pattern of behavior and is endorsing his primary opponent, Lonnie Talbert. Now, Weiner sent us a statement saying, quote, There are many people out there who would like her, meaning the governor, to resign. I'm not one of them. She has a job to do, and so do I, adding he will let his fate rest in the hands of the people who elected him. Police say the man accused of riddling a speed van with bullets was once a very successful businessman. He's locked up this morning. 63-year-old Scott Powell was arrested yesterday at a doctor's office after leading police on two chases and causing a SWAT situation. Now, Powell denies shooting at the speed van. However, he admitted he did go up to the van that night to see if police could move it, but says there was no one inside, so he left. Now we've learned this is not the first time he's zipped past that speed van. More on that in our second half hour. Police are still looking for the person who threw rocks through the window of a Rio Rancho speed van. It happened on Savannah Grande and Highway 528 last Sunday. Police are looking for a silver Dodge Neon. A witness says they saw that car leaving the scene. New this morning, a home caught on fire early this morning in Belen. Fire crews were called out before 3 this morning after flames were seen shooting out of the home's attic. The fire was quickly put out. No injuries reported at this time. It is not known how the fire started or what the estimated cost of damage is. Day one of Michael Astorga's death penalty hearing was held in Santa Fe yesterday. But instead of arguing why Astorga should or should not get the death penalty, lawyers instead lay out their cases for why he's innocent or guilty. The evidence that we have to prove to you is that James McGrain was on duty at the time of the killing and that the defendant intentionally killed him. His gold Dodge pickup was not involved. We know that because of the scientific information we now have. There should have been what we call blood spatter on that pickup that was involved. Now, even though Astorga has already been convicted of killing, killing Deputy James McGrain, his defense is still arguing that he is innocent. McGrain was shot and killed in Tijeras in 2006 during a traffic stop. Astorga was convicted of the murder last year. Now prosecutors are seeking a death penalty sentence. If jurors do not unanimously vote for the death penalty, he'll face life in prison. Day two of the sentencing is scheduled for Monday.
The Albuquerque firefighter accused of being involved in a burglary ring is on paid leave this morning. Anthony Pacheco was arrested Thursday night after two burglars told investigators they were selling stolen items to the 17-year AFD veteran. Police searched Pacheco's home earlier this week and found two stolen TVs. Police also say the suspected burglars told them they made some of the deals at Pacheco's fire station. Fire Chief James Breen says he's reviewing the allegations. What's important here is that firefighters fight for what is good and honorable in this world. And if these allegations are true, Anthony Pacheco has betrayed his, his profession and his fellow firefighters and is not one of us. Breen says Pacheco's personnel file is about five inches thick, adding there were a lot of complaints over the years. Pacheco has prior convictions for domestic violence and DWI.